Hi, I am Professor Orion and I will be your facilitator for the Orion Learning Dangerous Goods Awareness course along with Professor Learning. Hi everyone, I am Professor Learning. Welcome aboard this journey in your pursuit to learn more about dangerous goods. As part of this course, we shall answer the following questions. What are dangerous goods? Why should we be aware of dangerous goods? How do we identify and handle these goods safely? The following modules shall answer these questions. Introduction to Dangerous Goods Provisions Classification Marking and Labeling Handling and Emergency Procedures Let's start with our first module which will cover Definition of Dangerous Goods why are there rules and regulations for the safe transportation of dangerous goods by air? And who defines them? Let's start by defining dangerous goods. Dangerous goods are articles or substances which are capable of posing a risk to health, safety, property or the environment. A few examples of dangerous goods are pesticides, petrol, paint, gas cylinders, oven and drain cleaners, bleach, glues and aerosols are potentially dangerous goods. To better understand the risk these dangerous goods pose, let's examine the following accident. 11th May 1996 Miami International Airport. A value check flight was being prepared for takeoff. A cargo loader placed a few boxes of 144 out of date oxygen generators loosely packed in bubble wrap around an aircraft tire in the cargo hold. The aircraft starts to move towards the runway. This movement started the burning of one of the loosely packed oxygen generators and subsequently all of them start burning. The surface of the metal generator got hotter and hotter. The box and the bubble wrap caught fire which consumed everything in its path. The aircraft crashed and killed all on board. It was a clear definition of a dangerous goods mishandled by not following the laid down procedures. It was right from the shipper's part who had delivered the dangerous goods to the airline who had not followed the procedures supposed to be followed prior to handing over the dangerous goods to the airline. And also the airline had not followed the standard procedures for acceptance as well as handling of dangerous goods. Tragic. Tragic indeed. To avoid such accidents and incidents, procedures for dangerous goods were formulated. Professor, can you tell us who formulated these rules and regulations? Certainly. The United Nations appointed two committees to submit their recommendations on the carriage of dangerous goods. They were Committee of Experts, COE, and International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA. Based on the recommendations of these two committees, ICAO published the technical instructions along with Annexure 18 to the Chicago Convention which is the basis of all regulations for the safe transport of dangerous goods by air. Based on the ICAO Technical Instructions TI and Annex 18 International Air Transport Association produces a user-friendly easier to refer manual which is used as a field document for safe transport of dangerous goods by the aviation industry the dangerous goods regulations DGR manual published by IATA is updated annually
strict regulations for the transportation of dangerous goods are required because it is almost impossible to take corrective action in flight. During air transport, shipments may be exposed to the following extreme temperature differences, acceleration forces and vibration, changes in air pressure. So, it is very important to be aware of and trained in dangerous goods as per local civil aviation regulations. Professor, if these goods are so dangerous, then why carry them by air? We need to carry dangerous goods on aircraft for reasons such as passenger comfort and convenience, safe operation of aircraft, commercial demand and national emergency. On 28th October 1998, a passenger on a Northwest Flight 957 from Orlando, Florida to Memphis, Tennessee carried two gallons of a liquid with oxidizing and corrosive properties. This liquid was in two one-gallon plastic bottles and stored in an ice container. This corrosive and oxidizing liquid leaked in flight and contaminated three mail sacks and a large number of bags. On ground in Memphis, the cargo handlers overlooked this spillage as they thought it was water. They also transferred some bags to other Northwest flights, including Northwest Flight 7, which was departing for Seattle, Washington. When Northwest Flight 7 reached Seattle, two bags in the cargo compartment were burning. Due to this incident, several people required treatment. Northwest estimated that the total cost of the damage more than $40,000. Now that we are aware of the hazards and risks of dangerous goods, I'm certain we shall be more careful and vigilant in handling them. However, our passengers may not be aware of the dangers and may unknowingly carry dangerous goods in hand luggage or checked in baggage. Hence, we need to spread awareness amongst our passengers of dangerous goods through signages, posters, pamphlets and tickets. So, in this module, we have learned the definition of dangerous goods. Why are there rules and regulations for the safe transportation of dangerous goods by air and who defines them? Thank you.